God's word is sharper than any two as a sword. And it is. We know that God's word is powerful. God's word changes lives. It changes lives. As we think about the God in which we serve, he is all sovereign, he is all powerful, he is all knowing. The psalmist says, as you turn your Bible to Psalm, the verse, the chapter is 91. Psalm chapter 91, beginning at verse number 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the high, most high, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I would say of the Lord, he is my refuge. He is my fortress. My God in him will I trust. So many people, they get this initial birth verse of faith. And this is what the denomination people tell them. All you got to do, all you have to do is accept Christ in your heart. You get this verse of faith and you'll go to heaven. But it's more than that. Once you accept Christ by hearing the word, believing the word, word repenting of your sins, confessing Christ and being baptized, you must continue until the end in Revelation 2.10. You must continue to dwell with the Lord. You must be in that hiding place, that secret place of the Lord. And of course, it is Moses that had been with the Lord quite a while. He had experienced the glory of God initially in Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 6, as this burning bush barn burns, but yet it does, it is not consumed, it's still burning. And what a miracle that was. And God speaks in a deluded form, and we'll see this shortly, how no man can see God and live. We're not wired to see God and live at this point. We, as we approach God, his glory is so awesome that we'll be consumed if we were to experience God in his fullness. And so he comes to Moses in this deluded form, in a form of a born and bush, and he says, Moses, Moses, take off your shoes. You're standing on holy ground. Now, I know we have come to worship God in spirit and in truth. And I know God is in the midst of us. I want you to know that he dwells in the midst of us all of the time. We need to be aware of that. Someone say, well, I, I just don't feel it, preacher. I just don't feel it. We have to know that he's there. Because faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And the word of God says that he's always there. I want you to look at Psalm 139 is so beautiful. Psalm 139, beginning at verse number one. It shows the sovereignty of God and how he's everywhere at one time and he's all powerful. Psalm 139, verse number one, O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knoweth my down sitting and my uprising. Thou understandest my thought of all. That's why we need to get out of thoughts together. Because God knows all of our thoughts, and we need to make sure that we bathe our thoughts in God's word and, and be ready always to give an answer to every man after the reason of the hope that is in us and meeting in the field, because we're meditating on God's word all the time. That's the beauty of God 
dwelling in us and we dwelling in the Lord. We're abiding in the Lord because we're meditating on his word all the time. And we're praying all the time, aren't we? Paul says, pray without ceasing. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse number 17 and following. One New York preacher, he told the people, when you ride the subway, you can pray out loud. He said, because in New York, on the subway, they think everybody crazy anyway, so as you pray, <laughs> as you pray, <laughs> they won't think nothing about it. Pray out loud. We can pray out loud and we can pray silently, can't we? We pray all the time. Paul has said, uh, uh, always pray. Men, men should always pray, Luke 18, and faint not. The Bible says in Psalm 139 that thou compassest my path, in verse number 3, and my lying down when I go to bed and are acquainted with all my ways. Well, God knows my ways. Yes, he does. And he wants you to change your ways if they're not in order with his ways. But there is not a word in my mouth, my tongue. But lo, O oh Lord, thou knowest it all together. That's why the Bible tells us in Philippians 2, verse number 5, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. We need to have the mind of Christ. It's all about Christ. This is why some people miss the boat because, see, the word of God is our instructions in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 16 and the following. It's God breathed. Uh, so this is our book. This is our instruction book. This is what God has given us in order to be guided in the right fashion. And then the center of the Bible is Jesus Christ. We'll see this. We'll see this when, when, when God tells Moses to, now you hide yourself in the cleft of the rock. And we'll see who that rock was, who it was. The essence of this life is God's word abiding and living in us. And we abiding in the Lord. I love that song. Abide in me, Lord. Lord, abide in me. James puts it this way, as we draw nigh to God, in James chapter 4, verse number 8 and following, the Bible says he will draw nigh to us. In other words, there is a condition of God abiding in us and God dwelling with us. We must abide in him and he will abide in us. Oh, we see that same condition when it comes. You confess me before men, and then I'll confess you before my Father, which is in heaven. In other words, you confess me before men, and I will honor you. It's a two-way street, isn't it? Sometimes we always want something from God. You know, we all often pray, God, give me this, and God, give me that. But what are we giving God? What are we giving God? As we look at this wonderful book, of Exodus. Look at Exodus with me. Exodus 33, verse number 10. Let's look at verse number 9. And it came to pass that Moses entered into the tabernacle, the, the cloudy pillow descended, came down, and stood at the door of the tabernacle, and the Lord talked with Moses. How did he abide with his people back as they were traveling to Canaan land. Well, you know, there's a cloud of fire by night and a, and a cloud by day, and the cloud will hover over them. And God was in their presence. And they would be guided by it. In the morning, it would, that cloud will uh, ascend, and then it would, uh, they would follow that cloud like we are to follow Jesus. God abides with us, doesn't he? Abide with me. And, and, and as we we follow him as we do his blessed will. He is with us. And all the people in verse number 10 in Exodus chapter, in Exodus chapter 33, and, and all the people saw the holy pillar stand at the tabernacle door, and all the people rose up and worshiped every man in his tent door. It's an awesome thing to worship God. It's so awesome to be here now in the midst 
of worshiping God in spirit and in truth. John chapter 4, verse number 24. In spirit and in truth. Not the way we want to, but the way God wants us to worship. God will not accept any type of worship like uh, often people are doing today. You know, some of the mega church, they had it on CNN, how uh, the, the preacher entertained people with different uh, sights and shows and uh, puppet shows, you name it, just to entertain people. But the, word of, the, the Bible is about the word of God. Some people feel like, man, I, I should leave, uh, come in feeling kind of sad and leave feeling good. That's true. Don't get me wrong. But one man said in Germany, I'll never forget this. I, it, it stuck with me. He said, if the word of God pricks us and disciplines us, he said, if a child is disciplined, if a child is disciplined, how is it that if a child is disciplined, how, how is it that the child is jumping up, laughing and carrying on? I don't know about you, but the word of God pricks me. It pricks my heart. And if the word of God is pricking your heart because God disciplines us, he, he, he disciplines those whom he loves. It's just like a child. When, when they do wrong, you discipline them. Why? Because you love them. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 7 through 9. And some feel like in worship service, it's, they're not jumping down the aisle and and feeling something and shouting and carrying on that God is not in their presence. One group said this. They said they were just holding their hands up, waiting for the presence of God and the glory of God filled the building, and, and they, did not, they did not have the preacher to preach that day. They were just waving back and forth, letting the glory of God fill them. But it's not a feeling like that. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2, verse number 36 and following Curtis, when they heard this, they were pricked to their hearts. The word of God pricks us, doesn't it? It pricks us. Sometimes we want a feeling. You want a feeling, you can go to the Fox Theater. You can go to the nearest club. But when it comes to God dwelling with us, how does it feel, Brother Moore? I just know the Bible is right and God is there. He's there. I know he's there. The Bible says in, in verse number 11 in, in Exodus chapter 33, verse number 11, the Lord uh, spake unto Moses face to face as a man speaketh unto his friend. And he turned again into the camp. But his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man departed not out of the tabernacle. See, this is why Joshua was able to take over because he was there. He saw all of that. He experienced the glory of God and the power of God. That's the beauty of our young people growing up in the faith. When they see the God working in our lives, that no matter what happens, we, we stay, we hold on to God's unchanging hand. When they grow up, hopefully, and we train them up the right way, they would not depart from the Lord. And Moses said unto the Lord in verse number 12, See, thou sayest unto me, bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me, yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Grace in thy sight. Was Moses perfect? No, he wasn't. But see, grace covers that, doesn't it? Even with us, we're not perfect. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 8, the Bible says we're saved by grace. No matter how hard we work, how many people we bring to Christ, and, and how many people we help on side of the street, or you name it, uh, in our neighborhood, we're still unworthy. Why? Because the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 64, verse number 6, our righteousness before God is as filthy rags. And that's why the grace has to kick in, doesn't it? Then the Bible says in verse number 13, Now therefore, I pray thee, Moses says, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me thy glory. Show me thy glory. That I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. And he said, my presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. I will give thee peace. 
Isn't that what we're all seeking after, peace? Jesus leaves something behind. In John chapter 14, Liz, verse number 27, when he says, peace I leave with you. Peace I leave with you. See, when you are abiding in the presence of the Lord, it brings about peace. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 11, verse number 28, that we are to take our yoke upon us, him, us and, and learn of him, for he's meek and low in heart. See, it is a learning experience. We must continue to learn more about the Lord. And Moses had gotten to a point where he wanted to just know more about the Lord. He wanted, us, wanted to experience his glory. Once you're in this faith for a while, some of you all know this, you just want to get deeper and deeper and deeper. Oh, yeah, we have the devotional 10 minutes with God every morning, except on Sundays and Tuesday, of course. And that's just a taste. We're just giving you a taste of 24 hours with the Lord. Y'all hear me? You see, it, it really should be 24 hours with the Lord. And everything we do, and, and our thoughts and our ways should be focused on being in the presence of the Lord because he's there. In Psalm, in, in Philippians chapter 4, verse number 4, Paul says it this way. For the Lord is at hand. He's at hand. And Paul says in Acts chapter 17, verse number 24, and following that, he's not far from either one of us. In him we live and have our very being. And all we have to do is do what? Seek after him. And, that, and that's the problem sometimes. We're not seeking after the Lord like we should. We're not reading like we should. We're not praying like we should. We're not practicing what we preach like we should. And then we see in Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 6, here it goes. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. He that comes to God must believe that he exists and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. You all have been seeking him in your Christian life all these years, and you know how he rewards you. And you know how he has brought you out of situations that only God can do. He is God all by himself. The Bible says, and he said, my presence shall go before thee, and I will give thee rest. In verse number 15, Exodus chapter 33, and he said unto him, if thou present go not with me, carry us not up hence. In other words, Lord, if you, God, if you're not going to be with us, I don't want to go. I don't know about you. Paul says the same thing this way. Deborah, he says in Philippians chapter 1, verse number 21, he said, to live is Christ and to die is gain. In other words, if I live, I'm going to live to the glory of God. I'm going to live this life the best I can to glorify God because there's no other way. And then he said, to die is gain. Because one day, he, Paul knew that he'd be able to be with the Lord, and he knew his body would have to be changed, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. You can't go to heaven like this. Everybody want to go to heaven, but they don't want to die. But listen at this. This is why his glory was so bright when Moses goes up on that mountain. No man can see God and live. Before I go any further, I, I, I want to take you to Isaiah just, just to show you about this, this powerful glory of God, and, and I don't think we tap into it enough. Uh, we, we, we don't know, really, what we have in the Lord by abiding in the Lord. Well, I mean, he, he protects us from so many things. He, he really does. We, we don't know sometimes all that he protects us from. In Isaiah chapter 6, look at verse number 1. In the year that the king desired, died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the angels. These are angels, cherubims. Uh, each one had six wings. Now notice this now. With twain, with two of the wings, he covered his face. Because coming in the presence of God is an awesome thing. We will see shortly that, that Moses cannot uh, look at God and live. It's an awesome thing. He, he tells Moses, now, I want you to hide in the cleft of the rock. Now, notice now that, that as Moses hides in the cleft of the rock to see God's glory, 
uh, you know, you, you're in the cleft of a rock, and you, and you, you look, you can't see anything from your left to your right. And notice what God does. He, he puts his hand in front of his face so Moses can't see. But then again, his glory passes by, doesn't it? And his glory is so powerful, even though Moses can't see, Moses' face become bright as a light bulb. That's the glory of God. That's when you come in the presence of God. Notice this. These angels, each one had six wings with two twain. He covered his face. Two of them, he covered his face. Why? You're coming into the glory of God. Come into the presence of God. In Exodus chapter 19, remember, it was proud of them. They wanted to talk to God themselves. They got tired of listening to Moses. And God said, okay, you tell them to come to the uh, foot of the mountain. I'll talk to them. But he said, first thing I want them to do is purify themselves. In other words, you come to God, you need to purify yourself. And he to notice this. So two wings, he covered his face with two. And then with two with twain, he covered his feet. Coming into the glory, glory of God. Remember, in Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 6, he tells Moses, take off your shoes. You're standing on holy ground. It's an awesome thing to come in the presence of God. And the Bible says, and with Twain, he did fly too. He did fly. Coming into the presence of God. Moses, in this situation, we come back to Exodus chapter 33. For, in verse number 16, wherein shall it be, he says, known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight, Verse number 16, Exodus 33, Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people from all the people, and thy people from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. What is God? How do, what is he thinking about us? Think, how? How does he think about us? Uh, and only God knows, of course, but then again, at the same time, if we're abiding in the Lord, we pretty much know what he's thinking. Now, in this passage of Scripture, you can go to the New Testament in James chapter 5, verse number 16. And it, it, it's, it's so beautiful as we abide in the grace and the glory of God, we abide in him. Listen at this. In James, James chapter 5, verse number 16, the Bible says, the effect of fervent prayer of the righteous are very much. See, God, he shows us favor, doesn't he? When we're abiding in him, the effect of fervent prayer of the righteous person, that person is a person that is abiding in the Lord. And when they sin, they, they make it right with the Lord. They repent of their sins. See, the benefit of being a child of God is that you can get it right. If you're not a child of God, you can't get it right until you become a child of, a, 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 a child of God. Now, some say, well, I abide in the presence of the Lord. I'm not a Christian. But see, God blesses the just and unjust. But there's something about the spiritual blessings that are found in Jesus Christ. All spiritual blessings are found in Jesus Christ. See, the, the, the glory, the essence of this Bible, the glory, of course, that God brings about in this virgin woman. She brings about a child. Remember the New Testament? And then the Bible says that glory abides. In other words, uh, Christ in us, that the glory abides with you. Emmanuel means Christ with us. In other words, when she gives birth to this child, Jesus Christ, God's glory is seen in him, isn't it? Here it goes in John, so beautiful. In John chapter 1, verse number uh, 14 and following, uh, John puts it this way. The Bible says, and we beheld his glory. Remember? The glory of the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. And what was he full of? Grace and truth. Lord knows we need it, don't we? And this is why when Moses goes upon this mountain, he goes upon this mountain. Moses is showing us here that the old law is now vanishing away. See, this is the picture of it. We find this in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse number 6. And and, and, and this is what 1 Corinthians chapter 3, uh, verse number 6. Notice this. Let's, let's turn there. And this is where what uh, Brother Curtis, he refers to this often when we do the Lord's Supper. 
And, and I, I think it's so fitting uh, because sometimes we forget about it. Uh, but Curtis goes to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. I want to make sure I'm right about this. I don't want to say something about him that, uh, that's not right. It's 2 Corinthians chapter 3. I wanted to make sure I had it right now. It's 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse number 6. Listen at this. This is so beautiful. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse number 6. He brings reference to this. He says, the Bible says, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse number 6, who also has made us able ministers of the New Testament. See, that's part of the glory of God. You know, we're, we're able ministers of the New Testament. When Moses goes upon this mountain to receive uh, the Ten Commandments earlier, and then when he uh, goes to meet God and God shows him his glory as he hides in the cleft of the rock, his face, of course, shines so much that he has to put a veil over his face. Now, the Bible is going to show us shortly that, that that veil is the passing when his face began to shine, but then again, he puts the veil to show that the, the fading of the old law and then the coming of the new. He says in verse number six, the Bible says, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. Then he goes on to say it's so beautiful. Look at verse, let's go down to verse number 13 in 2 Corinthians 6. The Bible says, And not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look at the end of that which is abolished. That which is abolished, the law. It will be abolished. When Christ dies on the cross in John chapter 19, verse number 30 and 31, he said, it is finished. What is finished? The law is finished. This work on earth is done and finished. In other words, uh, this is the New Testament, and this is why we're New Testament Christians. That's why we're called Christians. We're not called Jews. We're called Christians. And then Jesus, he, 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 he gives us this point in John chapter 14, verse 15. It's so beautiful. He says this, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. My glory will be with you, and I'll abide with you, and one day, like the sun, we cannot embrace God's glory at this point. It's like if you approach the sun, the closer you get, it's hot enough here, isn't it? You're all complaining now. You get closer to the sun, the closer you'll get. I mean, it will just consume you. And that's how God's glory is. And this is why he had to hide Moses' face. But when we get to heaven, we'll be wired in order to receive that glory. Oh, how wonderful it's going to be. That wonderful, that wonderful glory of God. I don't know about you, but it, it's going to be all right, isn't it? When you get discouraged, just think about his glory and how he abides with you and how much he loves you and how much he cares about you. Just, just lift your head up and know that he cares. You've heard the word this morning, believe in all your heart, repent of your sin, confess Christ and be baptized. You're, you're straight away, come back, because he says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Be faithful unto death, and he'll give you a crown of life, and one day we'll be in the presence of the Lord. 